Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. Today we're talking about dividing complex numbers. And here's our to-do list. First, we'll start off with a definition of complex number, a plus bi form. I'll show you what that is. And then we'll talk about a quick review of the imaginary unit i and complex conjugates. Because we can't divide complex numbers without having a complex conjugate. And then we'll give an example of dividing complex numbers. I'll also put the timestamps for these different parts in the video description, so if you want to skip ahead, you're welcome to. All right, complex numbers, kind of a big uh, picture. Complex numbers really includes everything that you've discussed so far in algebra. So complex numbers is the big umbrella term that fits everything below that you see here on the screen. Everything below you see on the screen is a complex number. Complex numbers, though, can be broken down into two smaller groups, or I should say subgroups. And these two subgroups are the real numbers and the imaginary numbers. The imaginary numbers are the numbers that have the I with them, and everything else, those are considered real. The real numbers can be broken down further into two smaller subgroups, um, or two subgroups, and those subgroups are the rational which are any number that can be written as a fraction of two integers, like one-half or three-fourths, and the irrational, which is the group that includes numbers like pi. Below the rational, we have integers, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, etc. Below that, we have whole numbers, which just drop off the negative integers, and then the natural numbers, which drop off zero. So all of those are considered complex numbers. So let's talk about standard form of a complex number, which is a plus bi. So the a part is the real part. The bi is the imaginary part. And a itself and b, those are real numbers. And i is the imaginary unit. Standard form has the real part first and the imaginary part second. So a comes before the bi. The imaginary unit, the definition here that's important for you to know is a i equals the square root of negative 1. So if you take that and you square both sides of the equation, you end up getting i squared equals negative 1. Those are both very important definitions. And when we're dealing with negatives under even index radicals, the index, by the way, is the number out here in front. Wow, that was a really terrible number. If it's not there, there's nothing there, it's assumed to be a 2. So we don't write it. But 2 is an even number, so this is an even indexed radical, and there's a negative underneath. We always change that negative to i form, meaning that negative comes out front and becomes an i right there. I've included the two intermediate algebra steps here for you to look at. But oftentimes, students will just go from this first step to the last step and do the rest of it in their head. This last part is called the principal square root of a negative number, the i times the square root of b, just in case you're curious. So let's do a quick example of changing to i form. This negative here is underneath an even next radical. So that means it'll come out, and it will be an i. And then I'll have root 25, and square root of 25 is 5. I will generally, in convention, says that you should put the i in front of the number as long as there's no square root or any radical in front. So the square root of negative 25 is 5i. All right, complex conjugates. Let's talk about complex conjugates. So we need complex conjugates because they help us divide complex numbers. So a complex conjugate is, a, is something that is paired with every complex number. So here in these examples, you see a bunch of complex numbers, four complex numbers. To find the complex conjugate of each of these, all we do is change the sign of the imaginary part. That's it. So here's the imaginary part in the first example, and it's 2i, so it's positive. So if we change the sign, 
that means we get negative 5 minus 2i. There's the complex conjugate. So the next one, 6 minus 3i. That becomes 6 plus 3i. There's the complex conjugate. Here we have a, neg or a positive 4i, so that becomes negative 4i. And this next one is just 5. So what happened? Why didn't I change any sign there? Well, there is no imaginary part here, so I can't change anything. So if you just have a uh, complex number that only has the real part, then it is its own complex conjugate. Kind of cool, huh? So finding complex numbers is uh, pretty straightforward. All right, here we go. Dividing complex numbers. So the way we divide a complex number, it's a little bit different than we divide normal things or like real numbers. We divide a complex number by multiplying its numerator and its denominator by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we look at the denominator and we say, what's the complex conjugate? We should probably answer that right away, right? So the complex conjugate is 2 plus 5i. So we take that complex conjugate of the denominator and we multiply top and bottom of this fraction by that complex conjugate. You might be thinking, why do we do that? Well, do you remember back when you were doing multiplication of polynomials? And if you multiplied something of this form, a plus bi, a minus bi, then notice as you are doing the algebra, the foiling, the two middle terms cancel, and you're just left with the first term and the last term. Well, what that does is in the denominator, when we multiply by the complex conjugate, that puts it in the same a plus b, a minus b form. And so what happens is the i cancels in the denominator, which will end up, help, end up helping us. So let's do this problem. If we multiply top and bottom by this complex conjugate, then we have 2 plus 5i, 2 plus 5i, top and bottom. And now we just have two multiplication problems. So if we wrote out what these were, the 7 times the 2 gives us 14. The 7 times the 5i gives us 35i. The 4 times the 4i times the 2 is 8i. And the 4 times the 5i gives us 20i squared. Down the bottom. What do we get in the bottom? Let me do a different color. So the 2 and the 2 give us 4. Um, 2 and the 5i give us 10i. The negative 5i and the 2 give us negative 10i. Check that out. We're going to have some stuff cancel. And then we have negative 25i squared. So notice cancellation there. And we also need to remember what is i squared give us? That's negative 1, right? So if we kept going here, we'd have 14 plus 43i minus 20. Because that 20 times negative 1 gives us negative 20. <clears throat> And in the bottom, we have 4. The negative 25 times negative 1 gives us positive 25. The 14 and the negative 20 give us negative 6. Plus 43i. And in the bottom, we have 29. So we're almost done at this point. The last thing we need to do is we need to change to a plus bi form because complex numbers are always written in that a plus bi form. So we need a plus b 
i. So our real part and our imaginary part have to be separate. So we need to separate these two items. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two and these two and make two different fractions. So we get negative 6 divided by 29. And then we have plus 43 divided by 29 times i. So now we have our a, and we have our plus, and we have a b, and our i. So that's it. That's how you divide complex numbers. Hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed it or thought it was helpful, please give it a like. Follow the channel or leave a comment. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.